BingoDB is like the TypeScript of MongoDB. Let me explain. MongoDB is a JSON-based data management service that's sort of like JavaScript in that you can pass anything into it into what's called a collection without any errors. Here is an example of a MongoDB insert create post request. You'll notice in this insert one function, I accidentally misspelled age. This should be age with an E. Instead, I accidentally spelled it age with an AG. Well, in production, this would work fine. MongoDB would not give you any errors. There would not be any errors in this catch function. That's because MongoDB is sort of like JavaScript in that you can pass anything into it that you want, and there's no system for checking the variable names or the data types. BingoDB is like TypeScript. It's also JSON-based. It's JSON-based data management, but you have to declare your data types ahead of time. You have to declare the names of your variables and data types, or FingoDB will not let you post data. Here is an example of a FingoDB post request. One of the first things you'll notice is that it uses an API. This makes FingoDB a lot easier to learn. You can be up and running with FingoDB in under five minutes. You just go to FingoDB.com, click this sign up free button. Once you're in your account, you click this create a database button. Once you're within a database, you can create a database table name, for example, users. And this next part is what makes FingoDB sort of like TypeScript. And it's what really separates FingoDB from MongoDB. Remember again, with MongoDB, they have what are called collections and you can post any data you want into it without error. With MongoDB, your database tables have what are called columns. You have to create your columns ahead of time before you're allowed to post data to your FingoDB database. The way you create your database columns is to use key value pairs separated by commas. The key is the column name, the value is the data type. And so for example, say we want a name for the username. In this key value pair, we would say string. The next one, maybe we want age. For this value pair, we would say the variable type is number. And maybe we want to check if the user is human. For this value pair, we could say Boolean. If you come down here, you'll see there's three data types, string, number, Boolean. So if you ever want to save something like an array or an object, you'll want to stringify it first and save it to a string data type. Also, each row of data that you post automatically comes with a serial primary key. So you don't have to create one of those if you don't want to. And we automatically add a date timestamp to each data row posted. So you don't have to worry about that either, unless you want to format it in a particular way, or if you want to make sure it's in your local time. If you'd like to do that, you can always add a date created or something like that column, put a string, and then when you make a post request, you could create a new date and post it there. And now all you have to do is click create table and congratulations, you've already created your first database table. And now here is an example of how you would post your data. As you can see, there's some security built in with each API post request, you have to have your database ID, your database token, and your table ID. And then you have to post your row columns values. And this is the part that makes FingoDB sort of like TypeScript. Whenever you post your data, FingoDB will check for the correct variable name and it will check for the correct variable type. So in our API post example, if I were to accidentally misspell age, maybe I leave out the E and then I try to make this post, the post would fail. BingoDB would return an error saying, sorry, your row columns values, names and or data types do not match what you have declared ahead of time. So it makes it impossible to post the wrong kind of data. Or say, for example, I accidentally post the age as a string instead of a number. Again, this would not work with FingoDB. FingoDB would tell you that this data type does not match what you've declared ahead of time. It's supposed to be a number. Instead, it's a string. Once you've created your table in FingoDB.com, you can scroll down to click Show APIs, and it will show you the different APIs you can use to create, get, update, and delete data within your database tables. And if you ever want to update your database table names or column values, you can do that right here. Say I want to change users to just user. I can update the table, and now the table name is user. And that is how FingoDB is like the type
TypeScript of MongoDB. FingoDB is a JSON-based data management system. You save your data using JSON, but you have to declare your data names and variable types ahead of time so that it is impossible to post the wrong data. If you ever misspell a data key, FingoDB will not let you post that data. It will let you know that you misspelled something. If you ever accidentally post the wrong data type, FingoDB will let you know. If you would like to try FingoDB, you can go to FingoDB.com. It's free to sign up. The way pricing works, your first 10 rows of data are free. So you can go ahead and try out FingoDB for free. Then it's only $10 a month per 1 million rows of data that you save to your account. If you ever want to cancel your membership, you can come up here, click this icon here. You'll be taken to this page and you can come down here and click cancel membership at any time. There are no contracts you can cancel at any time. I'll be using FingoDB in an upcoming Next 13 video. We'll be building a full CRUD app with Next.js 13.2 and FingoDB using Next 13's new API route handlers. If you're interested in seeing that video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Like this video if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.